Right on. Well, that is going to wrap up our news segment. And the reason John went last is because his Father's Day gift guide, uh, which I think I called it the this uh, to to blend it in with the next segment. Our first segment is the famous monster fathers segment where we're basically celebrating father's day by taking a look at some monster fathers and uh, showing off some of our favorite collectibles of those monster fathers and that relationship. But we're also going to talk a little bit about some of our favorite relationships within the movies themselves, fathers and their, their children. Um, I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, Leslie was over here before. So I'll ask Leslie to well, show off what, yeah, Pretty that's angle. a really great <laughs> angle for Mina there. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> He's happy. Look at him. That's a bad <laughs> angle right there. <laughs> Godzilla <laughs> says that I should fight my own battles from now on. <laughs> <laughs> my God, Yogi the Bear. Oh, no, 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 no. That was Kobayashi. Man, I'm getting my movies mixed up. Um, <laughs> but he did have like a Yogi the Bear type of tone, but we ain't going to talk about that. But let me just talk about my favorite collectibles when it comes to Godzilla being a father is, of course, Mania and the 67 Godzilla. And this is the 30 centimeter version of the 67 Godzilla, the, Mus the Musoku Goji, and, of course, Mania. Of course, this actually was the Rick. Um, they brought out this version of Godzilla. Um, then it brought out like this version of Mania as well as the uh, smaller infant form, the firstborn form of Mania. But when I think of Godzilla as a father, I think about this. Now, of course, a case can be made for 68 slash 69, 95, mm -hmm. even Final Wars, right? But I think to me, this was the best mm -hmm. version of Godzilla being the dad. And while I was growing up, I enjoyed Son of Godzilla, you know? Um, even though I know coming into the community, I know it's not the... It's a, it's a very divisive film when it comes to fans. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It just depends on where you sit on that fence. And I loved it growing up. But once I had my first child, because I got three daughters, I got three kids. <clears throat> and after having my first child, seeing what Godzilla went through in the film, I did the exact same thing. Like when Godzilla comes to the island and he defends Minya when he's getting attacked or bullied by the three Kamakuras monsters or Gymantasis, whatever version you watch. Um, that was basically me. My daughter came to me a few times and said, hey, my dad, not, not my dad, but these kids are picking on me. You got to deal with that. So as a dad, you got to do what you have to do. Now, I don't suggest you do what Godzilla did, which is pick, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is, which is pick him up and bash him on the ground where body parts are flailing and set him on fire. Don't do that. But as a dad, you know, I had to do that. I had to, you know, find out what was going on with my child and take care of that. Or when Godzilla is sleeping a lot on the island, like, you know, we do see that in the film. And that's something that I did because with all due respect to the mothers out there, I give you all the credit in the world. <laughs> Parenting is a full-time job and it can be exhausting, especially if you have a full-time job like I do. And, and if you do a lot of things, right? And of course, children don't want to do, they don't want to lay around all day. They want to get up and explore the world. They want to do things. They want to be active. And like Godzilla, there were there were plenty of times where I woke up for a nap. Or I went to sleep for a nap. And my daughter was right there. And I woke up and she was nowhere to be found. And I'm looking all around my apartment for her, kind of like Godzilla was in Son of Godzilla. So Son of Godzilla, once I got my first child, Son of Godzilla really made me appreciate the film more and gave me a new perspective on that, which is why I want to um, talk about this on this show, um, this, this particular show, um, <clears throat> because Father's Day is next Sunday. Um, so with that being said, you know, I want to just give a huge shout out to all my fathers out there, all the collectors out there who are fathers or whatever. Um, if you're doing right by your kids, you're, in my opinion, you're no different than the frontline workers that has helped us during this pandemic. Y'all are heroes. Y'all are heroes. Y'all are unsung heroes in a lot of cases. And if you're not doing right by, by your kids, it's never too late to do right by your kids. So please get that in check. But to all the fathers out there, for one father to all of y'all, I salute you. And why don't you watch Son of Godzilla in honor of that? <laughs> all right. So I'm going to pass it over to my next host. Who's next? It's all right, me, David, David. Go for it. So I'm going to continue the love for Son of Godzilla. Um, I, I love the movie, too. It's a, it's a great entry. Uh, I love the story. I love the Toho Pseudoscience, the, uh, the Solgel Island weather machine project, where 
uh, they, they, they're trying to foresee the future, which is actually now when the Earth's climate is changing and they want to be able to control it so they can grow enough food and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I love the story. The characters are great. They're memorable. Maybe not the everyone's favorite Godzilla suit. Um, I, I actually like it. It's it's kind of fun. Um, it's different than, than the rest. But, it, you know, it's it has its place in the series in my opinion. And that brings me to my collectible, which is actually the pilot ace. Oh, uh, beautiful. Uh, that, um, <laughs> I actually picked up in Japan on my very first trip to Japan in 2006. Wow. And my first visit to Mandarake, wow. I saw this in there. And um, this, this is back when I was living in California. I used to get a lot of my stuff from Mike Johnson, uh, who lived in California also. And I remember I missed getting this from him and it was at, at his house and I saw this at his house. I'm like, Oh my God, that figure is so great. And this exact mm -hmm. color variation too. I love the pink and the green. Mm -hmm. It really stands out. Yeah. And the, the reason he's kind, of bent, he's kind of bent over like this, cause he did, he's so tall. He won't fit on my shelf. So I have to kind of bend him a little bit to fit in, into the shelf. So uh -huh. um, yeah, great figure. Um, uh, Christine, I know you're going to be looking for this guy now that you have oh, money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been looking for that one for a while. <laughs> All of you pilot ace collectors, beware because Christine is now on the prowl. So I know. Better, you know. <laughs> and one more into the it. mix. I'm sorry. That's right. Um, but anyway, this is this is my favorite um collectible from uh Son of Godzilla, and he's a great dad in that film, as Leslie mentioned. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about human characters as fathers in Toho films, and it brings me to a, another film that is sort of like polarizing. It's Godzilla's Revenge. Some people love it, some people hate it. Some people don't understand it. Some people do understand it. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but I'm going to focus on uh, Ichiro and his relationship with his father and his mother to some degree. Um, he's They're great parents. They just can't financially afford to be home with him. So that's the unfortunate uh, part where he's shy and he's by himself. But luckily he has Minami, the, the kindly toy maker, who, who befriends him and watches him and mentors him and tries to keep him out of trouble. Not very well, I might add. Um, but, but he's sort of the surrogate father figure to Ichiro in that film, which is very sweet. And it, if you watch it in that context as a child's fantasy film and not like a straight up science fiction epic, you might have, you know, view it with different eyes. And, um, you know, at the very end, you know, his father, you know, proves that, that, you know, he's proud of his son when, when he, uh, he, he knocks over the, he, he, oh, he, he honks the horn and the painter falls mm -hmm. and uh, he, his father kind of gives him a pass and goes over and talks to the guy and say, yeah, hey, my, hey, my son didn't mean it. I'll pay for it or whatever he says. But um, it's just a great story. And I suggest everybody go back and watch it again. Mm -hmm. with a little bit of a different perspective. Um, because it is really fun. It does have a lot of stock footage and, you know, not really my favorite, but it's his dream. You know, it's Ichiro's dream. Yeah, it's it, the music is fantastic. And, you know, the American opening, March of the Monsters, is really fun too. Um, oh, yeah. That, that, I, I remember that as a kid and just really enjoy, enjoyed that, that American uh, opening credits, the ultimate bullying film, exactly right. Yeah. Yep. That's um, exactly right. You know, That's exactly right. Good lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, Godzilla says, I have to learn to fight my own battles. Again, big guys? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you know, and uh, Ichiro becomes a hero at the end, and he fights his own personal Gabra. And I love Gabra. Gabra's a cool monster who doesn't get mm -hmm. enough love. And I'd love to see more representations of Gabra. That's a whole other story. Son of God, I'm not sorry. Son of Godzilla. Godzilla's Revenge. Check it out. It's fun. Oh, and one, one more line I love is, this car for sale. Very good. Very cheap. <laughs> hey, don't touch that. You'll break it. <laughs> uh, it looks a little beat up, but it runs pretty good. I mean, <laughs> that dubbing is just gold. Gold. It is. So it is. National dubbing is gold. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to pass it down to Christine. What do you got for your Father's Day collectible choice? All right, so I'm uh, also going to continue along with the Son of Godzilla, but I have the Thanks, Mark Air Baby um, Son nice. of Godzilla set yeah. here. So this, 
actually is also one of my favorite movies growing up. Um, I love the music. Um, the whole island theme mm -hmm. was really neat. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just cute to see, you know, this is the first time that you finally get to see what a baby Godzilla looks like. I remember when I first watched it, it wasn't what I expected a baby Godzilla to look like, especially when he came out looking like this. Like, what? It looks like a little Kermit the Frog or something. Oh, my God. My co-hosts on the Kaiju cast who were not, like, Kaiju fans were, like, absolutely terrified when I showed them that movie. Like, what is that? Yeah, it's it's awful. Keith hates it, too. Oh, he, 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 it's ugly. And, and I was watching it the other day, and you know the music? Doom. Step off. So yeah, it's got great music. And yeah, like the suit does look a lot different. Like you can tell, like I think they tried to make it look a little more um like friendly to children and all that. Yeah. He's got a very yeah. pronounced brow up here yeah. and then a very like thin nose. So it was Huge change to the mm -hmm. suit, I think. He was made um, to look like Mania. That, that was the purpose behind it. He was made to yeah. look more so like Mania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have like both that the, the very big, large brows and the short snout. But one cool thing about this figure is so this is um the Super Fast 2003 exclusive, but um you can put Mania on his tail. Yeah. Like the scene where he kind of he comes and saves Mania when he's hatched out of the egg from the, the Kamakuras that are bullying him. And um, so then he offers his his tail to Mina to kind of drag, drag him away him from the, yeah. the scene. So I think that's cool. And then you can also, if you want, like put him on his head or whatever. That's great. That's really neat. So um, and this was sculpted. I got a shout out again to one of my favorite sculptors, Masami Yamada. Um, yes. he sculpted this figure, and um, he sculpted the very famous marmot Desugoji. And uh, one thing that I did want to point out about the figures that he sculpts is. Uh, I don't think I can show it to you, but on each of his um, sculpts, he puts a little Y hidden in there somewhere for Yamada. So on this one, it's right here between the legs. <laughs> but I think it's really neat. Like usually he'll put it at like sometimes at the bottom of the door. I never knew somewhere. that. that so it, yeah, that's his little mark. So if you if you like look very closely, you can see a very tiny Y. And um, that's, that's his little his little oh, uh, mark there. There it is. That's so yeah. cool. And it's the Desugoji. It's at the base where the spines meet the tail. And uh, the Marmot uh, Godzilla 2000, he also sculpted that one too. I believe that one's at the base of the tail as well. But yeah, this was all, I mean, this was a movie that me and my dad watched all the time. And my, my dad's favorite part is where Godzilla is teaching Minya how to blow the, his radioactive fire and, and all the smoke rings come out. Um, that was his, and then he stomps on his tail. Um, so I mean I think that's that's I mean I think that is the I'll uh, no, steal Davis word quintessential <laughs> Godzilla Father's Day film because you really see Godzilla you know protecting his child teaching his child you know how to defend himself in the world and I do want to give a shout out to I have really quick we're gonna compare the the Showa series to the Heisei series so um, well I mean you know first we started out with with Baby Godzilla and then. And then we have Junior here. So I really like the relationship. You don't really see them interact too much, but the scene where Junior dies and he's killed by the destroyer crab, and then just the pain that they have, Godzilla, like with the emotion, you can tell like he's really he was upset. Crying. And, he was absolutely yeah, crying. Yeah, and it, oh my gosh. I, I still I still cry when I watch that. And then you know, he's he's pouring his life force into Junior to keep him alive and to keep him going. I mean, I think that's a, uh, I mean, I can't even imagine devastating for, to, to lose a child, but I mean, it worked because Godzilla poured his life, life force into Junior. And then, you know, at the end we see, um, you know, Junior is a, a full grown adult. So that I, I, I had to recognize that because I, I'm a big Heisei fan and I love Godzilla versus Destroyer. And I'm always I'm a huge fan of Junior. I think he's so cute, and it's just so cute, you know, how he's learning how to battle, and he's finally battling with Destroya, and yeah. he gets his butt kicked, but you know he's still yeah. up there fighting, and Godzilla comes to to back him up and and help him out. And so, on the human side of things, I wanted to point out the relationship between um, from Terra of Mecha Godzilla, um, Doctor Mifune, and his daughter Katsura. 
I think I have a few pictures um, in there, Kyle. But I think that's also a very tragic relationship as well. Um, so Dr. Bifune and his daughter Kasa were very close. And she was, him and his wife were the only ones that supported him through his research when everyone else was against him. And so she was there, Kasa was there helping him on all of his research. And then she, you know, got electrocuted and, and the aliens came and, and um, rescued her and brought her back to life as a cyborg. And she still continued to work with her father. And they had a great relationship working together. And then it was sad again that he, when she died again, and then the cyborgs again brought her back to life. Only this time it was, they put more machinery in here to actually control Mechagodzilla. Uh, or I'm sorry, not, um, yeah, Mechagodzilla. They put like the brain of Mechagodzilla inside of her. And Dr. Mufuni had that struggle of, you know, now his daughter is controlling this machine that's destroying the world. And then I, th I thought, I mean, that was a great relationship, but it was also tragic as well because like she fully supported her father. They supported each other and he was devastated when, you know, she was first killed helping him work on his research and then she was brought back to life to the aliens. And then again, like, and now she's in control of this terrible beast that's destroying the world and, yeah. and then he died and then she eventually, you know, had to kill herself to get rid of Mechagodzilla. But, it was a, a sad and another another showcase of like a tragic father relationship in the films. You know what? You know what? That's the thing. And and I agree wholeheartedly what you just said, Christine. But when you sit down and think about that, <laughs> they didn't believe him when he said that, they, that he found a dinosaur in the ocean. Right. Me meanwhile, uh -huh. you're living it's in amazing. the world that has three-headed space dragon, cyborg yeah, space <laughs> Oh, Fire true, breathing man. dinosaur. Um, yeah. but no, the Titanosaurus live in the ocean, though. But right. I'm not gonna believe a super dinosaur is this. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Hey, it's Showa, so it's Showa, so hey, hey. We, can, we can forgive some things. Showa, Showa, you can so. do anything. Oh, well, it be it's the best. <laughs> all right, who's next, John? Oh, and take it off to John. I think so. Okay, so I'm not going to pick a father-son uh, team or, or relationship in front of the camera. I'm going to go behind the camera and talk about the father and son team, a father who influenced my life and everyone else's experience about Godzilla and what Godzilla would be. Um, so I, I selected Eiji Seburai and his son, Hajime. Uh, and he had two, he had two other sons as well, and a daughter that was, I think, passed early, uh, you know, in her life. With that said, growing up in the 70s, all the way up to 80, you know, I didn't know about Saburai until, and only through magazines. Um, and everything about, I learned about Godzilla was always centered around Saburai. And it was like, wow, Subaru is so important. And also, not only to Godzilla, but to Ultraman. And I didn't realize until I had these few magazines, like uh, here, this fantastic and other imaginative, imaginative media and Fangoria and things that mentioned him. I would have never made the connection with, with who uh, Subaru was. But he became so important to the extent that I've had a picture of Subaru on my wall for over two decades. I have a picture of my dad and I have Sephiroth and Satsuma, the gods of life, all together. Three photos have been hanging on my wall for years. And on the show, I wear this hat as a tribute to Sephiroth as That's well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it, it, That's because it, I'm just feel that connected. But with that said, you know, uh, we uh, we all pretty much know Eiji Sephiroth and the impact that he had. Uh, we were commemorating member his birthday every year. Uh, and we know him as the father of virtue of really Godzilla and Tokusatsu. His, what he did behind the scenes to bring Godzilla to life uh, changed the world, changed the world of special effects, changed Japanese you know, movies and, and what we know as Tokusatsu. And Ultraman was born you know, in the 60s, later when he started uh, his own company, Saburai Productions. Um, he worked on you know, 56 films until his wow. death in... Wow, 1970, I know that. and so you know I, I've have, I have quite a bit of items uh, for representative of Saburaya. You know, we many of us have 
the sofa B figure of Sobaraya. There's another one I wish I could get my hands on where he has a hat on, but I need that the one. Ultra, Ultraman yeah. one. So I have little bits and pieces of Sobaraya. I have a number of books that I, I'd love to, one of these days I'm going to start translating through some of them the best I can. There's a little comic version of his life and mm -hmm. uh, wow. Ultraman in this. Really cool for kids, but great for non-Japanese speakers. And I can't say enough about Augustus Ragone's tome on A.G. Sabaraya. I read this last night and this morning and learned so much more that I did not know. There's also great books about uh, oh. a manga form. You know, this is like featuring great persons in history, and he's one of them. Really? And another great book. Uh, this is just, you know, Sabaraya. Oh, wow. So many great texts and books on Sabaraya. But recently, I was able to find a sad, but something I'm really proud to have found and glad and happy to have, um, is virtually is like an obituary uh, that was published uh, two days after his death in the um, Chunichi Sports newspaper. I mm -hmm. found this on Bayou Japan and was just happy to, to have it. I do have a translation of it up on my website at mykaiju.com if you want to check it out. Uh, so that is a little, that's a, something, you know, that I'm happy to have uh, in my collection. But now let's turn to a less familiar uh, son um, that also had a great impact uh, on Godzilla and Ultraman is his son, Hajime Saburaya, who's his eldest son. Uh, his other sons are Noboru Saburaya and Akira Saburaya. But his oldest son, Hajime, was born in 1931. And he's a screen. He was a screenwriter, and he wrote under a different name. So if you see that that name Azuma San, you know that's Hajime. Uh, he, I, you know, another thing I didn't realize he wrote the lyrics for the Ultraman theme. Wow, really? Oh, that that's amazing? cool. Yeah, I learned that this morning. I was like, oh my gosh! And I, uh, matter of fact, that was in where did I read that? It might have been in August, uh, August's book. And he also worked along with his dad on Godzilla 1954 and Godzilla Raise Again that followed. He was an assistant uh, special effects cinematographer. So that just tells you how you know close he was and his his eye uh, right along giving us a view on Godzilla. And in 1959, he um, uh, he joined uh, TBS Television, which bring you know brought Ultraman uh, to Japanese television. And in 1970. Uh, when his father, Eiji, passed, he left TBS and he became the president of Subarai Productions. And later he would serve as a producer. Along with uh, Hajime and his brother, Noboru, uh, they produced many of the Ultra series that we know, like Taro, Ace, Leo, and more. And sadly, Subarai, uh, he, uh, Hajime, he died in, in 73, but he has a long list of amazing credits. Uh, um, uh, to that, he touched so many things that we love and, and seen that I would not have known. Just learned recently about him, and the reason why I came to know about him, or maybe I've seen his name before, but didn't pay him any attention, is on Twitter one day I saw that uh, uh, this book and photos from the book, and this is a book that he wrote uh, in 1970 on special effects. And it's quite a fascinating book. I'm going to try to translate, you know, many pages as I can and things that are important, I think are important. 220 page little book. Not, I think it's, you can still find copies, but might not be readily available. Might have to wait a little bit and do some hunting. Check out some of what's inside. I just took some pictures of some of the oh, illustrations a lot. You know, I didn't include the text, but on special effects te techniques. And there's, just you know, a dozen plus illustrations and in, in, in descriptions about how they pulled off many of those incredible special effects techniques that were groundbreaking and made Ultraman and Godzilla and other Toho and Subaraya Kaiju what they were. So that's, so that's cool. my father and son uh, theme you know, combination, and I can't say enough about them because they shaped my life, especially as a as a child and as a collector. And, Absolutely. You know, and Such here, John, inspirations. John, this is the one you were talking That's about. That's the one I want. 
Yes, because that came with, didn't it, little, there's, I don't know if you have them. They came yeah, with the little over there, he's, he's over there on another shelf, but yeah, it comes with his little. Oh, uh, creature what? Mm. I have a ski boy. So, uh, one. so for the people yeah, who are watching that, that might not know what we're talking about, basically, Edgy Tsuburaya would sign his name with a little cartoon character. Mm -hmm. And yes. Yuji cool. uh, Nishimura from M1 had that, what Christine's holding up there, uh, and what David's holding up together. Those were paired in a box set for Eiji Tsuburaya's 100th birthday celebration. I have that set, too. I It's one of my prized possessions. I absolutely adore yeah. it. I need to get the one that David's got. I'm, I'm yeah, I got from Diane at uh, uh, from Claw Market at um, G Fest one year. Um, mm. That was my payment for working at the table. I got that figure. Oh, um, nice! Set. And it comes on. It comes on a nice little green base too, with a little nameplate on yeah. it. It's, it's a beautiful yeah. set if you can get it. And now, teeny one tiny that, scripts too. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. cool. And that's really there's, cool. One, there's one that I'm looking for. Um, it, another box set uh, by uh, by um, uh, a company called Yamanaya. And it's got an Abaros mm. and Banila and another I have without the hat on. Is is that the one you have? This one. That's the one I have. And I have the I have the two. Yeah. Kind of, okay, you have the so box. I'm, yes. I'm looking for that one too. So oh, man. Isn't that the one that came with the Godzilla too, isn't it? Uh, Same set, but it came yeah, with like there's Godzilla. A, no, there's a second set that had Godzilla and Gomez and oh, wow. yeah. I would have loved to have had that. Yeah, I got it was a movie. wonderful time to be a collector. Is that 100th birthday celebration? Indeed. It was, and those those humanoid figures, especially the ones that are like so, uh, you know, special to us who love the films. Like I love that stuff. That that's that's what it's all about for me. And any every chance I get to to get one of those and add it to my collection, I'm just going to jump on it. So, yeah, fun stuff. You know, I, it, John. Thank you. I found my set in Japan, I think it was 2018 for a hundred bucks at a wow. at Nagano wow. Broadway. Woo. But I really blew it. But I, I had the money, should have did it. I was uh back in my I think it was my second trip to Japan. I went to Gojiraya and they had an original Ultraman script for a thousand dollars. And I should have just I was on the verge of just getting it, wow. and I regret not doing it to this day. But yeah. I know somebody I that owns some of Eiji Tsuburaya's original scripts, actually. Oh, my darn. Wow. wow. Well, we that? all know him. It's Yuji from M1. <laughs> 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 Yuji has everything. Yuji yeah, has, has everything. everything. Yeah, like, like he was showing around. it off last time I saw him. And I was like, good Lord, man. I Amazing. totally agree, but it's, it's not easy to drop a grand in Japan when you're on, you know, visiting and stuff like that. Yeah. Even though it's not. Know, in, in hindsight, it probably would have been a good idea to grab it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just ended up with an original uh, Terra Mega Godzilla poster. That's oh, what I came for. Oh, that's nice. and, yeah, that's, good. that's not shabby. No, no, was it was quite not as expensive. <laughs> cool. So back to you. Right on. Well, I guess that means it's up to me. Yes, it is. Mm. All right. So, uh, Father's Day. Yeah, I think and thanks for your kind words, everybody, about Father's Day stuff. I, I am a parent. I I have a child who's no longer a child. He's a full blown adult, but now I'm just a, a fur parent. And I've got my my dog babies, which are <laughs> the ones I like to spoil <laughs> nowadays. It's it's <laughs> like I am uh man, I didn't know how much I, I wanted to be a dog parent until I had a dog. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's uh that's beyond the point because Hachi and Roxy are not going to come over here and sing Happy Father's Day to me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Number one, let's go for my favorite father-son collectible. I do have an X plus 25 centimeter uh, 67 Godzilla and the, well, also the 68 Godzilla with the Minya set from Destroy All Monsters. But I thought it would be kind of cool to show off a different Godzilla Minya set and... Uh, Oh, they're not doing it. But anyway, here's the oh. uh, this is oh, the trike yeah. set That's that right. I purchased. This is cool. also from M1. <laughs> That's cool. Yes, it is. Those are awesome. I, I love totally these things. About, yeah, they're great. <laughs> but, uh, Brett, I love it. Anyway, uh, I will say a couple things about these. Um, these are, as I just said, are from M1 Toys. M1 has really blown up in the trike department recently. And yeah. if you're not aware of the trikes, they're actually sort of like reimagined versions of much older toys. Like they're 
choice from the 70s like hero figures on trikes and stuff like that but so these guys uh the m1's been producing these for a while but they just started blowing up with a lot more different versions you can not just get godzilla you can get ultraman ultra seven camera sage in uh uh Hedera just came out matango uh, matango oh, yes. yeah so the the trikes are a big deal now and the the best part about it for you as a collector out there is when in-person events kick back in and M1 starts coming back to the States for these events, they usually will have a selection of trikes that they bring for these shows. So, uh, you know, when I first started looking at these things, I was like, wow, those are very expensive. I don't want to spend that much money on something so silly. But, uh, you know, at the shows, these will cost from the M1 table, unless they're super special limited releases, these will be about $70. So totally worth it mm -hmm. for that. The only thing I'm going to ask, Yuji, in the near future, would you do me a favor, sir? G.I.D. Minya-san, onegaishimasu. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have the same one, Dave, Kyle. <laughs> oh, nice. I have the red one with the, the glowy. I have the exact same yeah. set, too, Kyle. I've got the glowy with the red. <laughs> yeah, I picked this guy up at Monster Palooza a while ago. It's it was like one of the first times M1 came to the states for for selling stuff, and I remember. Okay. I was there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I think I didn't actually go to the the Monster Palooza show on Friday, and I had people telling me, "Oh my god, dude, M1 said of the stuff." Blah, blah, blah. So, thankfully, I got that guy. Um, now, in terms of showing off an actual relationship like an on-screen parental relationship father child relationship i did have one that i wanted to mention and that was uh it's not a showa era movie it's actually gamera the brave and Aww. just kind of hands up who here in our group has seen gamera the brave uh, if you have not seen it oh it's, god it's kind I'm of like a one. Oh, it's like a heartwarming it. film. It's it's like Gamera. A lot of people were disappointed in it after the trilogy came out, right? Because you'd be like, yes. dude, I love that trilogy. It's so badass. And then you end the trilogy with all these Gauss attacking Gamera. And then that's when literally the credits run. And so for Gamera the Brave to show up and then all of a sudden not be a continuation of that, I think a lot of people were unhappy with that film. Man, that so said, though, that oh. said, the the movie actually it's flawed as every kaiju film is, but the movie has a really special actual relationship that develops between Toru, the child in the front, uh, in the center of the screen, and his father. If you have not seen the film before, the film sort of really kicks in with this this timeline. These uh, the mother of this family dies. And mm -hmm. so the the movie immediately starts with the father and the son not being not getting along really well. And there's like this unspoken wrongness in their family because the mother's not around. They both miss her. And it's a really trust me when I say this, it is a great character arc. If you look back, uh, Robert Dwyer is in the chat and he mentioned um, for father child relationships. He mentioned Atragon. I went back and mm. I looked at every single Toho film from 54 through 69 or whatever. And I was looking for positive, mm. good connections mm. between fathers and their children. And I got to say, for the most part, number one, it's almost entirely father daughter. And the, the relationship is always strained to a strange and you don't even get like a real father son in the Godzilla series. You don't even get a real father son relationship until um, until Godzilla raids again, which is still estranged as well. So I don't know exactly why uh, the the character arcs aren't developed in the Toho movies, but damn, Gamera the Brave, the this relationship between the father and his son literally grows and connects and like wraps like connects together at the end it is a true character arc and the actual story itself i love so dearly i think it's a it's something people should definitely seek out if they have not seen gamera the brave so there you go that's uh what i wanted to make sure that i showed you guys for my father's again. Day, so. 
Excellent. Yeah, it's a. It, again, it's not perfect. It's flawed. You know, there's weird, there's weird choices like the the sound effects or the. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure I meant uh, Godzilla's Revenge, but yeah, um, yeah. It's anyway. The 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 movie is great, and if you can ignore the flaws, like most people do with the rest of the Godzilla series and Gamera series, <laughs> then I, I'd highly suggest not getting hung up on the fact that it's not a sequel to the 1999 Gamera. Anyway. I'm glad, I'm glad you yeah. mentioned that, because I might go back and watch it now, because Gamera the Brave is in this set. Nice. And like I mentioned, I did mention earlier that I, uh, I over Memorial Day, I saw my mom. We actually went to Maryland, and we walked into an FYE, and they actually had not this set, but they had both the re-released um, separate sets of the Gamma Showa Blu-ray from Arrow, cool. as well as the Heisei. So they're out there. So, nice. mm -hmm. so if, if you, you can't find them, they're really worth the investment. Trust me on that. Nice. Especially Gamera too. Anyway. Um, yes. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yes. I would probably say this is a perfect place to end our Father's Day segment. 